The Black Bay 58, a monstrously successful watch for Tudor. It's the watch from Tudor. But now they've just launched a 54. <laughs> So welcome back to the channel, I'm Adrian and this is simply a place where I talk about watches and I've just been to Watches and Wonders, a place full of watches. A place where Tudor, Rolex, Patek, Oris, Grand Seiko, the Vacheron, JLC, all of these brands launch the new watches and Tudor has just launched their Black Bay 54 and I, th I thought it was going to be a bit of a weird watch. I thought this thing is tiny, they've taken the small dive watch to the extreme. The Black Bay 58 was already small at 39mm, so this 54 at 37mm is Diddy. Genuinely Diddy. It's called the 54 because back in 1954 Tudor launched the 7922. This was the first dive watch that Tudor ever launched but it wasn't available to the public. The first available dive watch from Tudor was created in 1958 hence Black Bay 58. But this Black Bay 54 look at it it's a very very close recreation of the original. The case is stainless steel, it's 37 millimeters wide, it's 11.24 millimeters thick. We have a lug to lug measurement of 46 millimeters. It's got 20 millimeter lugs, 200 meters of water resistance and a 60 click unidirectional bezel. The bracelet starts at 20 millimeters and then tapers down nicely to an 18 millimeter clasp, which is the T-fit clasp. One of the big differences between this and the Black Bay 58 is the Black Bay 58 has a good looking but technically bad clasp. It's always got complaints about not being able to size correctly because of the uh, the micro adjustments are too far apart and so you can't get a good fit, but it also doesn't have on the fly extension on the clasp. The new Black Bay 54 has the T-Fit clasp, which is brilliant. The movement inside is a corporate in-house movement, meaning that Tudor owns the manufacturers and the different companies that make the components. So technically it is an in-house movement. I've been to visit the Tudor factory and that video will be coming out really very soon. So hit subscribe down there so you don't miss that. And you might want to hit the bell icon because YouTube doesn't really tell you anything if you just subscribe. The movement is automatic. It's cost certified, meaning it's highly accurate. It beats at 28,800 vibrations per hour. It has a silicon balance spring, meaning it's highly anti-magnetic and it has 70 hours of power reserve. On the rubber strap, it costs 3,030 pounds. On the bracelet, it costs 3,200 pounds. So clearly you're gonna to want to buy this on the bracelet. There's gonna be a lot of questions around, can I buy this watch or buy the bracelets and put it on my Black Bay 58 so I can get the T-Fit clasp? No, nope, none of that's gonna connect. Uh, the, the, the measurements are ever so slightly different. Although that was Tudor saying so. It'd be interesting to see what people do in the forums to see, uh, because there's always been messages from the brand saying, oh, you can't put this on that, but actually when people try it, it just works. So the official message from Tudor is, you can't buy the bracelet and put it on other watches. Uh, because it won't fit, but whether that's true or not, we'll just have to wait for the guys in the forum to try it out. And there's a couple of measurements of this thing on paper that translate to being something very different in real life. So the difference in measurement between this, uh, the, the thickness, for example, this is 11.24 millimeters thick, just under a millimeter thinner than the Black Bay 58. Yet it wears incredibly thinner because that measurement includes the domed sapphire crystal on top and the domed case back as well. And this is part of the, the clever design of the case is that you can have a relatively thick watch on paper, but design it so that when you look down the side of the case, it's actually quite thin. And the bit of metal that you see that resembles the case is very thin. And the thinness adds to its dainty feel. It's also small width weights. It's only two millimeters smaller than the Black Bay 58, but the Black Bay 58 was already a small diver at 39 millimeters. 37 millimeters, that is a significant reduction in size where the standard, the Submariner, of 41 millimeters, or the Seamaster, that is the standard sizing. When this watch was first announced, I had the first appointment um, with Tudor on Monday at Watches Wonders. And so it wasn't like I, I saw this watch online and then I went in and saw it. It's boom, here it is. Uh, so when I first saw this watch, it felt tiny. I thought, mm, that's a bit too small. This might be a bit of a flop. But then I tried it on the next day. Mm, it's growing on me. And then I tried it on at the weekend. So it's a good seven days of playing around with this watch. And I get it. It all makes sense. I think the last day made sense because I was wearing my Rolex Explorer. This is a 36 millimeter vintage watch. It's only 20 years old, but we can call 20 year old watches vintage, I guess. It's not particularly well made. It's got hollow center links. It's got hollow end links. The movement isn't particularly very good, but the overall feeling of this watch is it's just charming. It's, it's classic. It's classy. It's understated. 
That's exactly what I get with this 54. It's not trying to be the 41 millimeter diver. It's not trying to be the 42 millimeter big, bulbous, full of presence Pelagos. This is just a very understated, very chilled out diver, vintage inspired diver, and not overly vintage inspired. There's a lot of details that are missing from, well, between this and the Black Bay 58. We don't have all the gilt. We don't have that big red triangle on the bezel, and it's missing a lot of the little markers between zero and 15. So this watch, it's one of the watches that has presence because it's lacking presence, or it's got character because it's lacking character. That's exactly how I feel about my Explorer. A lot of people say it's a boring watch. There's nothing there. And that's where the character comes from. It's a, I'd, maybe if I was the ID guy, I'd be able to explain it in a better way. Uh, and and I, I struggle to articulate why I love my Explorer so much. I struggle to articulate why this watch, the 54, is so cool and has so much presence when it's lacking all of that stuff. It's just a big contradiction, I know. And it's impossible to understand which one is better between the 58 and 54, because I know that's gonna be the big question. The only answer is to try them on. The big thing around the 54 is that it has this, you can't ignore the vintage feeling of this watch. The 58 is slightly different because it's got heft. There's a big chunk of steel there. There's actually a lot of weight behind the 58. Whereas on the 54, it is really a very light watch. And so it looks vintage and it feels vintage, but it's a legitimate dive watch. 200 meters water resistance, screw down crown, unidirectional bezel on the fly bracelet extension. This watch can actually do it. And although complete, except you're probably not gonna choose the Black Bay 54 as your diving tool, it's nice to know that this thing can do it. You don't have to worry about wearing this thing in the shower or going swimming in the sea or, or whether this is gonna be damaged by a magnetic field. No, you've got the vintage look with all the modern technology inside. That's kind of the best combination. So the big question is Black Bay 54 versus Black Bay 58. It doesn't matter how many YouTube videos you see or Instagram shots you see of this watch, none of this is gonna help you when it comes to deciding whether you want the 58 or the Black Bay 54. You're simply just gonna have to try them on. I'll put up a graph here to show you the different measurements in, in all of them. Big thing to note is um, the T-Fit clasp on the Black Bay 54. That is a massive winning point. A T-Fit clasp is phenomenal, especially at this price point. The Black B58 does feel like it's got more character because of the extra gilt, as I mentioned, because of the extra, because of the red triangle and the little details on the bezel, but then it's got the bad clasp. The Black Bay 54, it's just more chilled. Perhaps less try hard because it doesn't have all the gilt, because it doesn't have all the extra details. If you go try it on, don't wear a big watch. Maybe don't wear a watch at all. Just, just go naked and uh, wrist-wise and try it on then. I do want to hear what you think of this because I, I think it's a very interesting choice. A very interesting proposition when the parent company Rolex is increasing the size of the watches. The Submariner is now 41 millimeters. The Daytona has just been increased to 39.8, I think it is, or, or 40 millimeters. Yacht Master is now 42 millimeters. So the parent company is certainly going up in size. Tudor is uh, going down. I have to start selling more product. We sell watch straps and watch accessories over at barkandjack.com. We have straps for 19 millimeter, 20 millimeter, 21 millimeter, and 22 millimeter watches. That's your Black Bay 58, that's your Black, that's your Pelagos 39, that's your Black Bay Pro, that's your Black Bay 41. All the Tudor watches we can cater for, and Rolexes for that matter. Check out the straps over at barkandjack.com and watch accessories we've got. Let me know what you think of this watch. Instagram, give me a follow at barkandjack, and I've got lots of content coming. It's quite fun going to Watches and Wonders, just seeing all these cool watches. Kind of miss it. Take care.